making me crazy. Listen to your patient and your gut. Her gut is telling her something is wrong. Her patient is telling her something is wrong. Today, we are reacting to a brand new show that you have already recommended as having some excellent obstetrics or gynecology content. Season one, episode two of Transplant. I saw Dr. Mike do a reaction to the first episode recently, and it actually had some interesting obstetric information as well. A case of peripartum cardiomyopathy, which is extremely rare. This video is also sponsored by Function of Beauty, and we'll hear more about them in a minute. So how long have you had this pain? Two days, but it's getting worse every hour. Any other symptoms I should know about? Fever, vomiting? Let's dry heaving count. <sighs> have you experienced these symptoms before, Miss uh, Bennett? Cassie, I have endometriosis, but this is way worse than normal. Right out the gate, I have a little bit of a problem with this. This person is doing a pelvic exam while getting information from the patient. This is not the way this should happen. You should be getting information from the patient about how long they've had their symptoms, what's going on, their history, all of that, before you're doing a very intimate exam. Have you spoken to your OBGYN about these new symptoms? Yes, I have, and they can't see me until next week, but the last time I saw her, she just told me to get pregnant. At least then I'd have nine months of relief. Right, well, I've heard that comes with its own set of side effects. <laughs> the patient has now told her that she has significant pain that is new and different than her typical endometriosis pain, and also indicated that she has a real terrible gynecologist who suggested she get pregnant instead of treating the endometriosis. Endometriosis is a pelvic disorder which can be really significant, can cause very significant pain, but can also just be completely pain-free and present as infertility. It's something that is sometimes difficult to diagnose. Technically, to diagnose endometriosis, you have to do surgery and get a biopsy. Sometimes we will diagnose endometriosis kind of preemptively based on symptoms of severe pelvic pain and try to avoid doing surgery, but to have a true diagnosis of endometriosis, it requires a surgical biopsy. That is unfortunate because it is one of the reasons that endometriosis goes undiagnosed for so long in many people. The adhesions for endometriosis can cause severe pain. Unfortunately, it's a chronic issue and there's really not too much we can do for flare up here in the emergency department, so. I know, I know. Look, and I know what you're thinking, okay? Woman with endo comes in, suffering from a flare up, is afraid it's something worse and it never is and there's nothing you can do for her. Look, I have been through this more times than I can count. Different things that I would worry about in this scenario would be things like an endometrioma, which is a large cyst on the ovary that is filled with dark fluid that is kind of a mixture of inflammatory fluid and old blood. And that can be extremely painful on its own, but it can also cause the ovary to twist over on itself in what is called a torsion. Now the doctor here says the adhesions from endometriosis can be extremely painful. Adhesions is scar tissue. She's right, but also not quite right. So endometriosis actually can be very, very painful, even in the absence of visual scar tissue and adhesions. It is a disease that doesn't often correlate well visually. You can have a patient who, like this, has severe pain, and when you go in and do surgery and look in their pelvis, all you see are teeny tiny little dots of endometriosis along the pelvic lining. You can also have a patient who just presents with infertility and go in and do a surgery to look at their pelvis and you see tons and tons of adhesions, but they've never complained of pain. All right, I've been told to go home and take pain meds and sleep it off and I have done all that. And I... Uh. Are you here by yourself? Often patients with endometriosis do feel that they are dismissed because they have a chronic pain issue and they come in and they are treated as though you can't have flare-ups that should be looked into and treated. And that's absolutely not the right attitude with endometriosis. If I were this doctor, I would be doing a few things. One of those things would be getting some blood work. I would want to do a pelvic exam, take a look, make sure there was no abnormal discharge or anything like that. And I would absolutely 100% want to be doing a transvaginal ultrasound to look at the ovaries, look at the pelvis and make sure there was nothing acute 
going on, meaning something new or different, even if it's related to the endometriosis that we can see on ultrasound. Thanks to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I love Function of Beauty. They've been supporting this channel and I've been using their products for a long time time. Their fully customizable hair care line is paraben and sulfate free as well as animal friendly. You get on their website and fill out a quick survey about your hair type and your hair care needs and goals and they ship your bottle of shampoo and conditioner as well as other products if you want them right to your door with your name on the bottle which is super cute. Now that winter's here and we've been traveling in the middle of the desert where there is absolutely no humidity, I am really loving the fact that I can get a more hydrating formula and deep conditioner which keeps my hair feeling soft and shiny. As I always mention, I love that they have a fragrance-free option. This can be something that is really hard for people who are sensitive to fragrances to find in store-bought brands. If you'd like to try out Function of Beauty's fully customizable hair care line and support my channel in the process, you can use my link in the description to get 20% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. What's your story, Dr. Curtis, quickly? Emergency walk-in, I'd like to do a lap to isolate the cause of her pain. Endometriosis, we both know we don't do elective procedures for chronic problems. Yes, but- I'm Likely having a flare-up. I did a transvaginal ultrasound and- well, Nothing's conclusive on it. There have been cases where imaging has missed ovarian torsion, even a ruptured cyst. Her abdomen's distended, she's in extreme pain, and I am concerned it could be more than endometriosis. She's exactly right. Ovarian torsions can be missed on ultrasound. You usually would see at least a cyst. It would be very unusual to have no findings at all in someone who needed to have surgery. So I do agree there. At very minimum, because my understanding here is that these are ER doctors, they should be getting an OBGYN consult. Or are you fishing for OR time? No, I'm not the operative time, but that doesn't mean my patient is wrong about her pain being acute. Dr. Curtis, endo's tricky. This person wouldn't be the one doing the surgery, so I'm a little bit confused about why he's saying she's just fishing for OR time. That would be both unethical and an unusual thing to accuse an ER resident physician of. Women can feel one thing one day and something completely different the next, the pathophysiology of uterine nerves. They're complex. And often don't correspond to what's happening internally. He makes some points that are true, that pain can be really bad one day and not the next, and that, like I said, symptoms can be not very correlative between how a patient feels and what their pelvis looks like. And every time we go in there, we run the risk of doing more harm than good. Surgical intervention is not an option in the absence of extremely clear evidence, which you simply do not have here. She should follow up with her OBGYNs and then the ultrasound, otherwise give her Toradol or send her home to rest. Wow, uh, I hate him. She needs to call OBGYN and have them come down, see the patient, look at the ultrasound, make a call from there. And we need a pregnancy test. They're sending me home. Uh, well, your imaging didn't, uh, didn't warrant further action. I did give you some anti-inflammatories for the pain. So if it gets any worse. What, come back? It's already worse. Look, please. Please don't be like the rest of them. Listen to your patient and your gut. Her gut is telling her something is wrong. Her patient is telling her something is wrong. You can take your time getting dressed. Ah, this is making me crazy. What happened? I got two blocks away and threw up. You told me to come back if it got worse. They just, they just gave me this bucket and told me to wait here. Yeah. I was trying to make it to the bathroom, but I, I couldn't. Come on. Okay. I feel like they've done a really great job of accurately representing what some patients, many patients with endometriosis go through. And I appreciate that they're talking about it. I also feel like they're pretty accurately representing the position a resident physician can be in when trying to listen to their patient and advocate for their patient and also balance kind of the hierarchy of medicine. I need someone to fight for me. Yeah. Just, um... Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go. 
for this patient in particular right now, what I think she needs is a GYN consult and what we call a diagnostic laparoscopy, which is where we make a small two or three millimeter incision just beneath the belly button or inside the belly button and use a camera to look into the pelvis and see if anything's going on. If a patient presents with acute onset abdominal pain, particularly if there's an ultrasound finding that looks like it might be a cyst, it is ovarian torsion until something tells me otherwise. My gut instinct in this situation is that this is a patient with endometriosis. What she likely has is an endometrioma or a large endometriosis cyst that has caused the ovary to twist on itself, cutting off the blood supply and causing acute pain associated with the vomiting that she's describing. She needs to go to the OR. The endometriosis patient I brought you earlier? No, he's in her home. We did, and she's back in agony. She's vomiting, she's hemorrhaging, which we both know are signs of a ruptured cyst and not just chronic endo pain. She needs surgery now. Book an OR, stat. And I want to stay on to see this patient through. It's her call. If it is ruptured, it's good we got it when we did. A ruptured cyst is also possible. I wouldn't expect to see, she said she's hemorrhaging. I, I That's kind of a, I don't know how to phrase this, a nonspecific sign. Definitely agree that along with ovarian torsion due to a cyst, a ruptured ovarian cyst causing significant pain or bleeding into the pelvis can be what this patient has. So that would be something else that's really difficult to see on ultrasound. It was a... Uh... It was a difficult surgery. In addition to the extensive scarring from the endometriosis, you also had a hemorrhaging ruptured cyst. I like that she's going in and talking to her, but I wish she would sit down at the bedside and chat with her on like a face-to-face -face level. And uh, as a result of the damage, we had to remove one of your ovaries. I lost an ovary? Well, the good news is we got in in time to save the other one. The natural thought process in this is, okay, I lost an ovary. Now I have 50% fertility. It doesn't quite work like that. Usually what happens is the other ovary kind of takes over and will ovulate each month. Most people will still have a cycle each month and most people will still ovulate each month. There is a slight decrease in conception if you are trying to get pregnant, but it's not anywhere close to 50%. I know most people think of the ovaries as being attached to the fallopian tubes right there. And when you ovulate, the egg comes out and into the fallopian tube immediately, but that's not really how it works. The ovary is attached to the uterus. So if you have the uterus here, there's a ligament that attaches the uterus and the ovary, and the fallopian tube comes out up here a little bit separate. The Fallopian tube has what we call fembria on the ends. Those have kind of a chemical attraction to where the ovaries are sitting when ovulation occurs. Actually, each fallopian tube can often access the ovary on the other side. So this is why you don't see a direct correlation of losing an ovary means 50% less likelihood of conception. It does decrease a little bit. She may have fertility issues related to this. She may have fertility issues related to the endometriosis, or she may not care about her fertility at all and just be frustrated that she's not being listened to. But in general, that's kind of how we look at loss of an ovary in relation to fertility. You, you told us that it was more serious all along and the system's just not good at dealing with chronic pain. I have a little bit of a problem with the way this is presented because in the timeline, it didn't seem like that much time went by. And with the hemorrhaging ovarian cyst, it's highly unlikely that the difference in when they went to the OR being an hour or two would be the difference in saving her ovary. It's not like a hemorrhaging cyst suddenly becomes harder to get out when more time has gone by. If they had said ovarian torsion, then I would have been on board with that because a large cyst that causes the ovary to torse, the longer that is left, the less blood flow the ovary has and the more likely it is to die. I think this patient should have gone to the OR earlier, but I think she would have lost her ovary whether she went three hours ago or when she ended up going. And also the patient should never be surprised if she loses an ovary. That patient should have been counseled from the get-go. We will do everything in our power to save your ovary, 
But if it gets to a point where it is unsafe to continue operating and trying to remove a cyst from the ovary that's causing you to bleed into your pelvis, then we will take the ovary out. I attribute her surprise to poor counseling prior to going back. I don't know what it's like to be dismissed and ignored, told what you feel isn't real. Cassie, I just wanted you to hear someone say you were right. That, you know, I, I don't know. It's, this is unfortunately a very accurate representation of the despair that people with severe endometriosis often feel in getting care. And honestly, with any chronic pain condition, this is, this is how it goes. And we have to work on making changes so that this is improved upon. I know I was. Thanks for being here today. If you have any questions about endometriosis, leave them in the pinned comment below. I would like to do an endometriosis video really soon. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Function of Beauty, and their wonderful hair care products. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.